Hi guys, welcome. My name is Carl Strom. Um, we're going to be doing a new little series on this server. I say little, it's probably going to be a very long series. Now, this is called this is a game called Dorfus. It's one of, if not, one of the oldest MMORPG games out there that's still alive today. Um, it's a French 2D based platform, and <coughs> it basically works on a turn on turn action. Um, and basically what we have here is a number of classes that we can create. Now what's a really good um, thing about Dorfus which grabs a lot of people is the artwork and the story, um, the achievement base, the player base, just everything about it is, is really really good. It's not as well known as it used to be. It was on par with RuneScape at one point back in, I think it was 2008 or so, um, but unfortunately its player base has kind of decreased which has kind of made it quite a niche niche player um, I myself have played for 12 years and um, this is just one of my many accounts um, I enjoy it thoroughly I have you know I've gone through probably tens tens nearly 20 accounts at the moment um, what's really interesting if we go into our server selection <coughs> is we have our regular servers, which basically, you know, your character evolves normally with no bonuses or penalties, and death is not permanent. So this is just a basically just a regular account. On we have a server called Heroic. Um, everything is ex is is basically times free. So this means when defeated by a monster, seventy five percent of the items belonging to the losers are distributed among the area's monsters. The remaining twenty five percent are destroyed. So basically, a dead character can be replayed, but you start at level one. So when you die, you die. And then the epic, so permanent death against monsters, non-permanent death against players. Times free experience and loot gained when defeated by monsters. All of the items belonging to the losers are destroyed. Colosseum fights, which are like PvP fights, do not give experience. A dead character can be replayed at level 1. So it's very similar. Um, tend to find heroic is obviously a lot harder. And that's something that I'm probably going to start playing now. Um, you kind of need the motivation to... Um, go ahead and you know play this sort of game because it is a long, tedious and grinding game. But that's something you've got to appreciate about it as well. So we're going to be starting on Heroic server. And, you know, this server's been out for years now, so there's going to be very experienced players on it. Um, now I'll talk you quickly through the classes. So it'll start from left to right. We've got uh, the difficulty from 1 star to 3 star. As you can see, the far right is a difficulty of three star. Now, it doesn't mean it's a better character. Um, each one has its own benefits, and each one has its own um, negatives, basically. Now, if we start on the most common, which is the IOP, it's basically a warrior. And as you can see here, it gives you a sort of little uh, input of how much damage it can it can deal out, um, the buffing potential, positioning, summoner, healer, protector, tank. You know, you get the, you get the gist. So the IOP is essentially a warrior. You get Kra, which is your archer. You've got to have an archer. Um, as you can see, it's really high damage dealer. Um, nice buffer. Sacria is a berserker. Now, essentially, the Sacria um, relies on having a lot of health in fight. Um, very close quarters. Um, you see there, tank. So it's very, very useful, especially if we're going into, say, um, a heroic server, for instance, because we need to be able to sustain damage. The Anaripsa. Um, is a healer. You obviously always need a healer, so you know this is the best class to use as a healer. The Ozomodus, which is a creature summoner. Now this this class is really really good for um, a single player game because we have we have many benefits. We can summon um, different animals, and our animals scale off of um, our health. So the higher health we have, the higher health they have. I think they actually changed it so it's level based now. Um, I'm not too sure about that, but still, um, you know, it doesn't. It does say here that they're not really a tank, which is right. But their summons are tanks, if that makes sense. We have a Shram, which is a uh, assassin, really, really strong character, can be played if it's played right. Um, can set up a number of traps, which don't despawn, um, deal massive amounts of damage. So you got the Uganak, which is quite a new class. I'm pretty sure I think it's the newest one. <clears throat> it's been out for about f two, three years now. Um, really strong class. Um, 
I'd say the difficulty is not a one. They can be quite hard to play because you have to basically go off the um, Berserk Rage, which is like a little red um, thing above above the character. Um, we got the Anatruff, which is a really good class if you want to get some mats. Um, they're usually a chance class, which we'll have to go through again when we get into the game. Um, now the Anatruffs are really, really unique. They were one of the most sought after classes because um, in PVM drops are very important. They still are to this day, um, but it's a lot easier to get mats with a new achievement base and whatnot. The Echo Flip. Now the Echo Flip is a really, really common class. They are a bit of everything. They can heal, they can damage deal, they can buff, summon, position. Um, they're, they're really, really good classes overall, but it relies, some of it relies on luck. Um, nice set of spells, and they can pretty much play any single um, characteristic. We got a Foggernaut. Now I've this is probably my one of my least played classes. I've never really played it. They basically rely on three different types of summons, which is a Harpooner, uh, a Lifesaver, and a Tack Turret. Now one doubles damage, one pushes back, and one heals. And then on the midst of that, you can also use your own damaging spells. So uh, it's a very unique class. Um, good for positioning. But I wouldn't really recommend it myself. If you're a new player, I wouldn't really start off as a Foggernaut. I'd mostly try start off as a Kra, um, or even an Oza. Really, really useful. Got a Fekka, which is the tank of the game, essentially. Um, they have really good reduced damage spells. So if you want to do single player PVM, like um, we're probably going to be doing on this se series, uh, a Fekka is a really good choice. Hupper Mage, one of the newer classes as well. Hupper Mage can do a bit of everything. The unique thing about Hupper Mages is they can combine different elements um, to create different out, different um, status changes. So we've got, for instance, I'll give a quick one. Um, if we hit an enemy with Flamethrow, which is a fire spell, and then we hit them with uh, Astral Blade, which is an air spell, you see, I can't, you can't really, I, um, on the dependent targets, um, elemental state, basically after hit with a fire and then an air move the target can suffer three minus three action points which is really really useful masquerader now this was my main class for about six years um <clears throat> just because they are in theory one of the best tanks in the game um you can argue that obviously fecker and masks are pretty much the same um but the mask can deal out a lot more damage um just due to the fact that they have a vast variety of positioning spells and um, they have a lot of buffs that come with the spells so let's give a good example we've got one that I believe gives dodge um, I don't think it's on this set of spells but basically every character has two sets of spells so the spell the spell that I'm on about isn't actually on this page it's on the other, other set of spells okay so we've got a pandua Every team needs a Pandua. Um, they, they are basically the best positioners in the game. They can throw enemies. Um, they can lock enemies, which means they can't move. Um, they can evade enemies. Um, they can be quite strong. Elotrope. Now, Elotrope is... Oh, they're amazing. Um, you have to be really smart to play an Elotrope, I would say. <coughs> basically, they summon portals and... Depending on the distance you are from the portal, it basically mirrors that exact um, line of sight, I'd say, through the portal. The longer it is, like the longer the portals are set, as you can see down here, the more damage you will cause. So if you have a portal from one map to the one 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 end of map to the other side of the map, and you hit a spell through it on an enemy, you will deal a mad amount of damage. Really, really, really good classes. I myself. <laughs> haven't really invested too much time in them but yeah really good class Sedida Sedida's I wouldn't say for a free difficulty um, I don't know if that's because I've played it before but personally I just wouldn't expect it to be that star difficulty um, they re they rely on their summons to basically reduce movement points and action points and um, also they can poison enemies so it, they're really good for PVM because they can poison multiple enemies at once and um, what that does is basically makes you able to attack 
the poison enemies by attacking one enemy. So it's if you play it safe, they can pretty much solo every single dungeon in the game. Um, but it's a very very hard class to play. Rogue again another three star difficulty class. Um, all about positioning. They are the highest damage dealing class in the game, I believe. Um, maybe I might be wrong. I think SRAM is the heart is the highest, just due to the fact that they can place a stupid amount of traps. But a rogue is very very strong. Um, they basically rely on their bombs, and after a bomb is set up, they form a wall. If they do it a linear, like as you can see on here, um, and after that, if they blow it up, it sets out a massive amount of damage. Now a Zella, oof, Zella is probably, it is the diff most difficult class to play, by far. Um, all their spells rely on manipulation, um, positioning, um, minus action point usage, It's they are very, very, very hard to play. Um, I respect anyone who has mained one and played one for a long period of time, but I myself just cannot do it at all. So now I've gone through the classes one by one, which did take quite a while. We're going to actually pick one ourselves. Um, I would leave it for you guys to decide, but obviously this being a brand new channel, brand new series, I don't think I'm going to get that input straight away. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to, what I've basically been looking to do is try and, is start off as a Sakria. Now, you know, Sakrias are... As I said, a really good berserk, a really good tank. They can be really strong, but you have to be really smart to play them. So, I'm not going to make a female, I'm going to make a male. And this is basically the customization class. So, you've got two different types you've got female and male. The female sprite for a Sakria is miles better, 100% better, in my opinion. And your male sprite has got a few different facial changes, very evil ones down here, and more of the good ones just up top. So, with this, with the nice music playing in the background, you can basically just colorize everything. So if you press this random button down here, each different color palette will change. And then, you know, creating a character always takes long. Um, so let's just speed this process up a bit. Um, I think how you create a character is kind of like a representation of how you will play in game. Um, you know, if someone has quite a, a nice looking colour palette, you kind of expect them to be um, better at the game, I guess. I don't know, it's something I've kind of come across over the years. I think it's just, you know, whatever looks better, people tend to play better, or they've got the experience it to do so. Um, so what we can do is copy the colour code over. I kind of like that blue on the trousers as well as the hat and then the skin colour, let's just make it a bit darker there we go yeah I'm digging that, so let's just go through the faces you can change this at any point of the game by the way um, yeah, love it so let's go with that now I think of a name um, so we'll try Karlstrom perfect <laughs> that was very easy to the world of Twelve. A peaceful world under the protection of the Twelve Gods. A land of legend ruled by the power of the Dofus. Six dragon eggs, symbols of power and givers of hope. Until one terrible day when they were stolen. Now the harmony is broken. The elements and monsters have been unleashed. The time has come. Your destiny has brought you to Inkernam. Discover the world. Find precious allies. Find the Dofus. Become a hero. And become a part of the legend. So there we go, guys. I didn't want to skip that bit. Nice little cutscene to end the video on. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed part one of the Let's Play. Stick around for part two, we'll be getting more in depth with the battling, the questing, and just overall having a good time. Thanks for sticking around, and I hope to see you in the next video.